Good afternoon. Risk and safety. In 1987, the worst peacetime maritime disaster occurred, and that was the collision between the tanker Vector and the passenger roll-on, roll-off ferry Donya Path. 4,387 people lost their lives. The vast majority were burnt alive in the water where they ended up after the two ships collided. In 2012, the Costa Concordia incident occurred and it cost the insurance industry in excess of $1 billion just to remove the wreck. Let me not discuss all the groundings that have re resulted in massive pollution incidents. We can start with the Torrey Canyon, we can move on to Exxon Valdez, the Brer, the Sea Empress, the list is never ending, but it costs the industry dearly. So they are all results of navigational accidents and the navigation has been practiced for years, but in the last two or three years, the face of navigation is changing considerably. It has not yet been fully realized ashore, but the traditional wheelhouse or the place where the navigation was conducted consisted of the wheelhouse where it was actually implemented and the chart room where voyages were prepared. So people would go backwards and forwards between the two places to check the ship's position and the progress of the ship. Now with the introduction of Vectis, the chart room or the chart space has become a redundant location and the officers are conducting their entire watch in one part of the bridge alone. And equipment is sh slowly shifting from the chart room out into the space where it is required. And I've got several slides here showing you various bridges. The first one shows a fairly typical console which is now incorporating ECDIS and the ARPA display side by side. And occasional bridges have an integrated bridge screen display in the center. This is another one and looking at it from that angle you can see that it is rapidly approaching the appearance of an aircraft cockpit. Notice on the deck head the various displays which are prescribed by regulation in SOLAS. But there is another problem with this type of bridge and that is total internal reflection. So depending on where you are stood, whether you can see something visually from your standing point, should we say. This is the back of the bridge. We're using a different expression now. We don't say chart space because there are no charts anymore. They're all contained in the ECDIS as ENCs, electronic navigation charts. And you can see there are still instruments stuck there on the wooden bulkhead, but otherwise that place is unused. Here is an example of what navigation looks like in practice. And that display shows three independent navigation systems displayed simultaneously at the same time. The first one is GPS position, following the track as marked on the ENC, and the little black dots behind are the records of where the ship was. We then have, if you look at the land, you can see some brighter yellow color. That is known as the radar overlay. And then marked on the ECDIS, although not measured there, is a blue dotted line, which is the parallel index line. The fourth and final system is visual when we can see things. Because for years we have been trying to resolve the problem of bad visibility by radar. And we now have so much experience with radar that I argue strongly, and with many senior captains at sea today, that instrumentation has now replaced the visual means of navigation. Here is another example, this one from a different type of ECDIS, showing the passage through the Dardanelles. 
And on this one, uh, the, on the screen, we have got marked numerous different parallel index lines. So it's a continuous system all the way through the Dardanelles. We have GPS and we have a radar image to follow. Two continuous position monitoring systems. So that if one fails, we just continue with the other one. It's not a big deal. Now, on this display, don't concentrate on the radar or the X dis display, but look at the top right-hand corner. Even at that small scale, you can see that that digital display is very clear. And slowly, manufacturers are introducing these displays that have got really good clarity and enables an officer of the watch, a pilot, or a master to see at a glance the information that he requires. This one is a digital analog display of the engine. Notice the clarity here. So if we could get all these displays of information that we need for the officer, the watch, and the captain, it makes their life so much easier. Instead of having to run around to find this information in the bridge, if it's put in the right place, they can stay there and monitor the situation continuously in a more calm atmosphere. Another engine control system, different manufacturer, again, notice the clarity. This one shows a test routine. I think this is the DSC, not sure, but it just shows how easy it is to do some of the equipment checks on the bridge. It's not a long-winded thing that requires some long procedure written in any SMS system. Nowadays, we even have course recorders that do not have paper, but the manufacturers have adopted them so you can write on the screen and you can download this record onto a USB stick. Bridge wing cameras. So we can mount cameras on the bridge wings. This is from a tanker. This is in existence today. And imagine that, rather like the reversing camera in a car. We could use these as docking cameras for big ships. The same manufacturer of this car makes ships, by the way. So why do we need huge bridge wings? 60 meter beam ships, bridge wing to bridge wing. Not necessary. We can make them smaller. We can make the construction simpler and save a lot of money. In the old days, we used to have books on the bridges. Yeah? Sailing directions, light lists, radio signals. Today, these are all digital. And there is an extract from the tide tables for Hamburg today. These can be downloaded from the digital publication and incorporated into an electronic passage plan. So the benefits, these are huge, okay? And it is not just a matter of cost. It's also improved information flow to the officers when they need it. It improves situational awareness because instead of the officer running backwards and forwards into the chart room and out again and losing track where ships were, etc., he can remain in one place at one time, continually monitoring the position by referring to two screens and occasionally glancing up at the window or other monitors. It's rather like driving your car. What proportion of the time do you look in your rear view mirror? And now with a reversing camera, there's not even any need to turn around when you are reverse parking. So by having all this information at their fingertips, it allows officers to make more informed decisions. But we need to be very careful because there are regulations in existence that will stop this moving in the right direction. 
There are regulations about locating instrumentation on the deckhead, which is no longer required if we design our bridge correctly. And of course, we need to consider the layout and the construction of the bridge itself. Obviously, you can see from this photograph, there are some clear problems there. I call this a mezze. There are lots of small plates all thrown together and we hope that the final result, we enjoy it. It is so bad that the helmsman has to stand in front of the radar to steer the ship. It's a good job these people were not designing cars because they'd be out of business by day one. Nobody would buy them. Here, at the back of the photograph there, is a, an alarm cancelling position. I'm stood with my arms on the ectis, so when there is an alarm, the officer has to run to the back of the bridge to cancel the alarm. Or have a, a seat have a seaman on the other side of the bridge to cancel the alarm button there. Who thought of that? And here, trying to just operate equipment, this officer can barely reach that instrument at the back of the chart table. And she had great problems reaching this one on the central bridge console. Absolute madness in design. But some companies are now spending and investing a lot of money in navigation. And this is an idea, I will say their name, it's NYK line, and it's an ergonomically efficient bridge with everything within reach. And we have the two seats for the officers at the front and the master's chair behind, together with the navigation planning station in the center behind that position. And that's the sort of direction we're going in the bridge. This is the cockpit arrangement for a high-speed ferry that crosses the Straits of Gibraltar. That is the direction I believe we should be going for all ocean-going ships because from the seated position, you have got your full uh, arc of visibility from two points of the beam on either side to right ahead. The objectives of the bridge then are to avoid these groundings, collisions, ice damage, and heavy weather damage. Thank you very much. <laughs>